All right, we're going to be using our Markdown documents a lot in this course. So this video will talk a little bit about the R Markdown template that you get when you create a new R Markdown document. So if you go to the green button on the top left hand corner, click R Markdown. This gives you the option to create a new R Markdown document. I'm going to give it a new title and press OK. Now, um, first thing, let's save this document. Notice it's called Untitled 1. So I'm going to press Command S and give it a name, press Save. And now we've saved this document in our current project directory. To find out if our markdown is working properly in your RStudio, the first thing you should do is uh, press knit. And if this is working, you will see this document uh, be properly compiled, in this case into a website. And I've got it set up to show the website in the viewer pane, so we can scroll down and see that it's there. In the last video I mentioned that if you click this button, uh, you can uh, pop the HTML file into a web browser on your computer and look at it. So here's the first thing to note about what we've done. I'm going to drag this window down a little bit. In this window here, we are seeing the RMD file. It's a text file, and we're basically looking at this in a text editor. The file is in our folder here, test r markdown.rmd. And just to illustrate that it is a text file, I'm just going to quickly show this uh, folder here in my general finder view. I'm going to take this file and open it up in a text edit. So as you can see, it's just a text file that we can make changes to. If you open it up in a text editor, like text edit, you don't get all the nice different colors that show you different parts of the document. That's all it is. It's a simple text file. When we press the knit button, um, RStudio goes through this text file and compiles it into a different kind of document. So notice that there's actually two files here called test R markdown. One's an RMD file. This is the one that the text file that you make changes to. When you knit it, it's created an HTML file. Um, and that's a hypertext markup language, basically a website. If we're back in the Finder view, if you take this HTML file, you can drag it into a web browser and then view it. So this is a file that's on our local computer. You can see that in the browser uh, address here. It's a file and not an HTTP. So this isn't online. It's just a local file. But it is an HTML file, so it will display in a browser. If you're curious to look at what is this HTML file, well, it's also a text file. You can open it up by clicking on it and saying open in editor. And you'll see a whole bunch of stuff in here that has to do with HTML files. For now, we'll just ignore this. But it's worth recognizing that there's uh, the RMD file that we're going to make changes to, and then the output is an HTML file. Um, what's interesting about our Markdown documents is that you can, let's look at the viewer, write notes to yourself. So you can think of this kind of like a journal. You can write notes to yourself and embed R code. So this part is an embedded R code. This part is embedded R code. And have both notes or any text combined with your code into a document that's easy to share. So imagine if someone asked you, uh, could you please send me some data and the analysis you did for some project you're working on? If you're doing this in R Markdown, you can create a document such as this one over here uh, and send it to somebody and it'll have notes, it'll have the code you use, it'll have the output, and you can display figures and do all sorts of things.
we'll get into these topics later, but it's, it's possible to uh, knit an R Markdown document into a different format besides a web page. So if we click this little arrow on the knit button, we can see we have an option to knit to PDF. Let's just try that and see what happens. All right, here we have a PDF file that we could send to somebody and it's now appearing here. There's also an option to knit to Word. Let's try that. Did that work? Not sure. Looks like it's opening up Word and yeah, it did work. We have the same document knitted into, a, into the Word format. Um, so this is to illustrate an interesting property of our Markdown documents. Uh, basically, in the text document, the RMD file, you write down the content that you want to be in your document, and then you can output it into various formats, such as Word, PDF, or HTML. Um, and that's an interesting way to, to share stuff with other people. We'll see that we can also uh, knit into presentations, like slide presentations, like PowerPoint, and all sorts of other things as we go along. But for now, I want to take a closer look at the contents of this RMD file and talk about it. So the first part you'll see is this part here. It's in between, at the top, we've got three dashes, some stuff in the middle, and then three more dashes. I like to call these kinds of things a sandwich. You've got the, the top part, the bottom part of the sandwich, and then you've got the stuff inside the sandwich. So all of this is called the YAML header, Y-A-M-L. I think it stands for yet another markup language, but I might be wrong about that. For now, it's I'm just going to point out that we can um, write some settings into here. For example, a title, an author, a date. We can set, uh, define the output settings that will occur when you press the knit button. There's lots of other options and settings for more advanced uses of R Markdown. Uh, at the beginning of this course, we won't be making many changes to this part of the document besides the title or maybe the author name. Okay, the next part is called an R code chunk. There's another kind of sandwich here. Notice it starts with three back ticks and ends with three back ticks. This first R code chunk. Um, let's just look at it a little bit. We've got the word setup. We've got include equals false. We've got this thing knitter colon colon ops underscore chunk echo equals true. It looks like a bunch of gibberish if you don't uh, if you aren't familiar with what's going on, and that's okay. What is going on here are general settings for your R Markdown document. We'll come back to that, but for now, here's the take home point. You don't need to change this stuff in order to start using R Markdowns right away. As you become more familiar with using these things, uh, these two parts become valuable to change general settings across your document. All right, let's move down. What do we see? Well, the first thing we see is two hashtags and the words R Markdown. And then some text with a few different kinds of funny things in it, like these two stars, or this uh, link here has these uh, little hats around it. What's going on is this is just writing plain text. I'm going to delete this and show you some examples of writing plain text in Markdown. So delete. I'm going to do two hashtags. Write some text. Notice it turns blue, and I've just written a second level header. 
if we write one hashtag, so just let me write in a few things here. I've basically defined a title, a top level header, and then I've written some text. We can write more. And then I've created a little subheader, a second level header with two hashtags, and I've written some more text. Um, let's just knit this and see what happens. All right, so it's turned it into a Word document. And notice it's changed the stuff that was here before. Now we have a first level header and second level header. Uh, I, I don't want to, I want to knit to HTML only and I want to get rid of the PDF and Word thing, so I'm just going to delete those two options, press knit again, and hopefully this time it will make it a website. And here we see it. We've got the title, we've got the name being displayed, the date, a first level header, the text, a second level header, some more text. So if you want to write text, and have different headers, you can just you know, keep writing all day long as much as you want. Whenever you press knit, all of that text will go into the document. Okay, so let's say you want to write some R code. Well, they've got an example here. This is another R code chunk. Let's take a look at it. We've got three back ticks and then a left curly brace, the letter R, the word cars, and a right curly brace. And then we've got some R code here, the summary function operating on something called cars. So what's going on here? Well, you can find out by running the code in this little chunk. You could do that by pressing the play button. And just to explain what's going on here, cars is a bunch of data, it's a data file, and summary is doing some summary statistics of the data file, so it's just printing that out right here. I'm going to delete this little chunk and show an example of making a new chunk that does a little bit of R code. So first I'll type it out, back tick, back tick, back tick, R, do a space, and notice everything's gone gray, do three more back ticks, and the gray part now is telling me basically where the, this little chunk is bounded. So anything in between the top part here and the bottom part, I can now put R code. Um, note that you need to put the letter R here inside the two braces so that RStudio knows to compile the code inside here as R code. So for example, if we do one plus one, um, if we run this, it will compile this and create a two. What happens if we knit the document? All right. Well, we can see two things here. The gray box is showing us, it's printing out the R code that's in the code chunk. And it is underneath displaying the output of whatever happens in here. Uh, notice I deleted a few things. Before it had the word cars in there and um, this is just a way of labeling your chunk. So it's not necessary for uh, actually being able to run the chunk. If we added more things, uh, now this little code chunk has three lines. If we knit this, then we should see uh, a couple things happen. Okay. Uh, we can see that one plus one is the is the R code that we had in there. It gets compiled. The output is two. Then it goes to the next one. It gets printed out, and so on. 
And let's keep going down into this tutorial uh, or a template R Markdown document. The next thing we see including plot. So it's just giving us an example of how you could include a plot here. And this is going to be a second level header. And let's scroll down and see what we're looking at. Okay, so we're seeing that including plots is being printed. The text you can also embed plots, for example, has been uh, compiled and it's been shown on the website. And then we're seeing a graph, which is pretty cool. But we're not seeing a little gray box with this R code chunk. So what's going on in this R code chunk? Well, a couple things are going on here. We're running a line of code that happens to produce a graph. You can double check for yourself that this line of code produces a graph by either, say, you could grab this and test it out in the console. So that's down here. I'm just going to copy that into the console and press return. And sure enough, that generates a plot inside the plot window. If we press the play button on this code chunk, it will run this code chunk inside the R Markdown document. And oh, let's do it twice. And now the plot is being shown underneath the code chunk. I'm just going to make that go away, close it. But why isn't this uh, piece of R code being shown above the plot? Well, you can see that there is an option in here, echo equals false. And this option controls whether or not the contents of the code chunk is displayed on the website. So if we change this to true, let's try that. Now uh, the R code that generates this graph is being shown inside the web document. And uh, in the template there, they're nice. They, they explain that that's what this little thing is doing in the bottom part of the text. I want to show you one more important thing that you'll use commonly when you're writing code chunks. For example, let's say you're, I'm just going to, let's start again. I'll just delete all of this. Um, how about all of this? And let's say what uh, what happens when your code doesn't work? Well, let's show an example. I'm going to use a hotkey um, on a Mac. It's Option Command I. That automatically creates a little code chunk for us. And I'm going to do something like I'm going to add together two things that shouldn't add together, that should not work. So I'm going to add the letter D to the number 4. And we can just try to do this in the console. And when we do that, we get an error. So we've written some R code that doesn't work. If we try to press this play button, we can see that we get an error. And well, what happens if you try to knit the document? Ah, we get an error. And you can't look at your document. This can be annoying. And you might think, uh, well, this, this is probably going to happen a lot, actually. You'll be, you'll be writing code inside an R Markdown document. You might have lots of these code chunks throughout, and one of them won't work. Now, uh, that doesn't mean you can't produce an R Markdown document. It just means that you need to fix your code chunk somehow. Let's talk about a few things you can do while you're trying to figure out what's wrong with your code. So first of all, we can set the eval option to false. Notice what I've done here is I add a little comma after the R, and then I've typed in an option, eval equals false. And this option means that our studio will not attempt to evaluate this code chunk. So if we knit it, 
what's going to happen is our code will be printed as a code block, um, but it, R isn't attempting to run this and it doesn't produce an error, so we are able to knit our entire document. And that's a nice feature uh, when you're trying to de debug something. All right, so that's a brief <laughs> intro to using these R Markdown templates. In the next example, we'll talk about using an R Markdown document to solve some of the basic programming challenges for the next few lectures.